Hi, I'm Phil Broadhead, Deputy Leader from BCP Council. Welcome to another episode of our mini series of podcasts where we're revisiting some of the businesses, charities and organisations that secured grant funding from the Council back in the depths of the pandemic to find out how they use that funding to do innovative projects, not just to help their own businesses, but to help our own area as well. Today's episode talks to Mick from the Surviving Minds Foundation, where they talk about their project to help people reconnect with nature and the woodland and how that's really helped them to recover from the for the pandemic. I hope you enjoy the episode. Right, so Mick, thank you so much for joining us today and, and having a conversation about all the amazing things you've been doing. To start with, to kick off, tell us a little bit about yourself and about the Surviving Minds Foundation and, and how it began and what it's all about. Well, uh, great to be here. Um, Surviving Minds was uh, an idea that was started with a, um, a colleague of mine. We were ex-military um, mm-hmm. and we were going to do something for veterans um, with PTSD um, and that's we, that's been in the pipeline for a long long time outdoor activities uh, to help people with PTSD um, he's a paramedic uh, it's evolved to the fact that we took that to the NHS the NHS uh, bought in um, early last year and that's that's when we came down um, because obviously they were in the pandemic uh, and they understood that their staff needed some well-being so uh, last year we did um, NHS um, and there was also times when BCP council staff came on that because to, to fill places uh, and 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 so that's where it, it it kind of started it was set up to uh give people um opportunity to just de-stress mm-hmm. in the woods um, so it's all about nature so it's focused around outdoors and, and woods in particular it's, it's um there is a magic that woods give off uh, it's got they're called photosides no magic really they just give off a chemical compound um that actually has healing properties to the human body medically proven um re- reduces stress um uh, attacks cortisone you know it, it 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 just makes you feel better um and when you leave a wood after about four hours you actually your body your heart rate is down your stress levels are lower it's, it's just just feel and it energized. just happens you know you just go in any woods for a couple of hours and that will happen um you know that's the magic of woods fantastic so so how long how long have you been going so when when did when did it you know really take off and and begin to form into what it is so now so in march of last year um mm-hmm. 21 we started doing it for the nhs also nhs um uh uh, we, so we did some work prior. We'd, we'd had the idea, and the idea had been on park. Mm. Uh, and obviously, COVID parked a lot of things. Um, Wayne, my business partner, was up in um, uh, up in Scotland collecting people with COVID on a helicopter from the oil rigs. Wow, He's a paramedic, um, and I was working in testing. And we said, "Well, now's the time to do it." You know, there was that little respite, um, and we, we reached out to a few organisers. Would you like? Would you be interested? We had the wood. Um, we always had the idea. Um, and we just said, well, let's, let's do it now. Now's the time to do it, you know. And um, it it was successful for the NHS, um, and it was also successful for the uh, BCP um, ARG fund. Yeah, fantastic. So, and I suppose a really, really apt time actually coming out of COVID when that focus, you know, it, people realigned their thinking to well being, to you know, looking inward as well as outward, reassessing their life. It kind of feels like the right time when people I, are wanting to connect think, with um, nature and things like that. I think the, the the COVID highlighted it to people that they needed well-being. <clears throat> I think um, people forget when COVID has, has gone, mm. they're still racing along doing those things and they still need to look after their well-being. But of course, there's nothing to highlight it because I think that the start stop of, of COVID gave people, you know, when people started going outside and that's all they were able to do, yeah. you know, uh, it kind of highlighted um, actually there is more to this, you know. Um, so yeah, it, it worked for us. So looking at the uh, at the projects that you were doing from a council point of view, you're really keen to help as many businesses, charities, <clears throat> and organisations with the funding, not just to help them to survive, but to do things different to help people's well being and and businesses to thrive as well. When 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 you got involved, what was what was your idea and your aim with the support that we were offering? Well, we thought it was amazing because for individuals to pay to come to our woods to pay for two people to be there to to enable it. It, it becomes prohibitively, um, well, it, it's prohibitive in cost. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the, 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 the fact that the, the, the grant was there, it allowed people to come and benefit from the well-being. It wasn't just BCP staff. Uh, we had quite a few BCP staff. We had individuals through from all socioeconomic groups. And, and that was lovely because there's a lot of people that need, you know, I mean, everyone can benefit from it. Um, and sometimes it's just having the tools to do it. And, and, and that's what the grant gave. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. I think we've had return custom. Um, we've had people ask questions. We've had people 
come back and bring their kids, uh, you know, or we've seen the benefits of this, you know, can you can we do activities? Uh, and and um, that funding helped massively to to kind of disseminate that and and make it accessible, and probably to get it going as well. If you were, if you were quite new as a, as a foundation well, yeah. to, so walk us through you know what it sported you know what you know what it, what did what, what what did we do? Um, you come to the woods um, and that's the first stress uh, yeah. out of the way. You, you park your car <laughs> halfway and, there already, and, <laughs> and, and and then we 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 do. Um, it's a technique called shinrin yoko. It's a Japanese term means forest bathing, and basically it's just about immersing yourself in the forest um, and. And we walk down the woods and we talk about the flora and the fauna. It's an ancient woodland, mm-hmm. 250 years plus old. Actually, it's over a thousand years old. Um, but um, so it's yeah, um, it's a walk down through the woods and, and people start learning a little bit about woodland. Um, we take them down a little bit further and we start talking about wood lore, the things that we have forgotten, you know, in our okay. deep reptilian yeah. Um, yeah. memory, you know the tree of life, you know, the fact that ash is a a sacred tree, that holly, um, you need to ask permission before you cut it because it doesn't like it because the fairies don't, you know, and, and so much history, I suppose, in woodland, history and law, Mm. um, you know, and, and we kind of intertwine those things, take people down and then we, we, we relaxed campfire scene, big circle, you know, it just has a a calming effect. It's, it's, it's a nice place to be. Uh, and, we then do what we call a bit of primal connection. We light fires, fire uh, with with um, sort of fire steels and uh, catching a spark. And for a lot of people, it's the first time, and there's that sort of uh, mm. caveman <laughs> or cavewoman sound um, of satisfaction of catching a spark and turning it into fire. Um, and after four hours of doing that, maybe toasting the odd marshmallow um, or two and drinking some tea, going for a woodland walk, looking at a mother tree, talking about the connectivity of the whole uh, of the woodland. Um, People go back to the car park and they've been in the woods for four hours and they're like, wow, and they've I've been here for four hours yeah, and they've thought of nothing. And that's when the brain does its repair work, when there's very little going on. Um, and, you know, the mind is cleared and it's like, wow, I feel so relaxed. You can instantly see the difference. Yeah. So, and, and of course, this was part of the, the COVID bounce back as well. So yeah. this was offered to, I suppose, businesses and organizations, uh, was team off- building, as well as kind of more individual um, rejuvenation. I, th- I think a lot of teams used it as a, a reconnect mm. point uh, yeah. because they've been working independently from really, home, as, really you, as, as you probably have done and yeah. uh, most people have. And the first time, we've had people that the first time they've met each other was other than on you know a small screen yeah, yeah, in 2D. was in the woods wow um, and you know it's like I didn't realise you were that tall and you know the, the, the <laughs> yeah. standard was well you've got legs you know and, and so on um, and that reconnecting is really really important as well because we are a social creature human beings need to reconnect with other human beings you know we we have social drive yeah um, and that was also happening down down in the woods um, so it was a team building but it wasn't problem solving type exercises it was just like chat. Yeah, reconnect. You know what I mean? You know, because everything in the woods is connected, and um, it yeah, it was. Um, and yeah. the feedback that you've been getting from it has been. I mean, I've heard a few people that have uh, you know connected with this, and they would they 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 gush. They're gushing. I I've got to say, our um, you know, uh, we we've asked people if if they want if they like it, put a put a review up on on um, on Google, and we've got all five star reviews, uh, mm. and and the comments are absolutely lovely. Um, yeah, people had, you know, and we had return customers as well. People, you know, people have come back independently. They've, uh, we had one lady who brought her, f- her grandchildren. They'd recently lost their mother mm. and they kind of lost their way a bit as a family. And brought them all along and they just came and they were and they just chatted and, you know, because it's very easy to get hooked up and, you know, in yeah. grief on yeah. a screen yeah. and hide away. Especially and, in the modern world, yeah. So, um, you know, she, she brought, and, and yeah, uh, you know, th- there's, there's a lot to be said for spending time around a fire, just chilling and in being in the wood. And just being in the wood. So looking at the Surviving Mind Foundation now, I mean, obviously those projects have, have, have you know, come through the system. How, how's it going with, you know, with, with what you're doing now and what the plans are for the future? So the plans for the future are, um, because I think the situation has evolved financially for, you know, I mean, obviously there is a cost of living crisis. So, yeah, um, yeah. you know, uh, to, to make it accessible, we're going to become, um, we're working in partnership with, um, uh, we've got a yoga instructor on board. Uh, she wants to do woodland yoga and use oh, the site. Yeah. Um, we've got a, um, another uh, person, she's a, a moon um, 
coach. Um, so she she does sort of holistic healing and 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 guiding, and she uses the site for her activities. Um, and we 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 still want to offer our activities. So green woodworking, foraging. But you can work with lots of others. I mean, it's a space that everyone can and, do and lots of different things. With. The, that, that's exactly it. So yeah. we're we're doing some collaborative working um, using the site and. Um, as long as it fits with the, the footprint of the site, you know, it's, 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 it's um, in keeping, um, it's fine. And um, that's next year's project. We, we, I mean, we have, the term that I use is we want to be the best kept secret in Dorset. Yeah. Um, and so sorry about this. It's going to publicize it a bit, so I apologize. Um, actually, um, <laughs> you know, anyone that's been is more than welcome because they get it and there is so much more to offer. That's that. So, you know... Um, mm. Uh, you know. And I suppose, I mean, you mentioned the cost of living and the inflation and, and just, you know, we, we, we leave one crisis and then something else yeah. comes, you know, almost out of the blue. It kind of feels like it's more relevant than ever before going forward, because I suppose if you're not careful, this is a type of thing which is on the um, on the nice to have list, but it's probably critical to people's well-being. It's um, it. Yeah, I, I don't think people realize how run, you know, when you're working at 100 miles an hour, you yeah. don't realize, you know, you, you've, you've got, everyone's got, everyone's got something to do. They're, they're really busy doing it and they kind of forget. But actually your personal well-being is absolutely crucial because mm. it will manifest in illness if you are not well. Um, and, you know, it will start with warning signs and so on and so on and so on. And, you know, I'm sure there's some medics out there will tell you all the data. Um, but eventually people cannot perform at the peak that they are expected to. So, you know, four hours is equivalent to about a month's worth of well-being. Uh, you know, four hours is nothing in the grand is that scheme. right? Yeah. Wow. That's um, so, you know, um, that that's, uh, you know, so taking four hours out, even just going for a four-hour walk in the woods, that's as good as it's going to get. That You know, that, that, that that's exactly. perfect. So um, it is, I think, more important because we are leading busier lifestyles. And a lot of people are going back to nature as a, a reconnect. I think, you know, there's lots of um, apps and things on on phones that you can play to take some down, downtime. You know, I do it myself. I play the odd game, mm -hmm. um, but actually, real stuff is is also important. It's 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 quite actually it's quite affirming, isn't it? We were talking um, before we did the podcast about um, you know foraging in Southbourne now. Yeah, yeah, you know, absolutely. and actually, it's people have you know, when we when we've actually seen this from an economic development point of view. One of the I suppose benefits of COVID was people reconnecting with their local areas, with their local high streets but also with the nature that exists close to them as yeah. well, because it's not just something that's over there. Um, so I think it's it, it feels like something that's that's caught hold as well. And so hopefully more people can can yeah rediscover it locally as well as doing doing things like this. But going back to you, you're 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 properly involved and and going full hog this winter, aren't you? Tell us a little bit about that. So um, I am planning to spend a year in the woods uh, certainly a year working so every day i do some woodland work um because the wood needs it it's, it's been um you know it's been understood it's a coppice that needs regeneration um so i've been working there every day um doing something and a lot of the time i stay over so wow um, the winter period i intend to to spend a lot of time in the woods um actually um staying in the woods um uh, it's a personal challenge. I've never spent a year. I've spent a lot of time in the woods. I've spent months on a stretch, but I've never spent a a year, um, you know, working and doing woodland stuff. So that that's a personal that'll be challenge. really interesting as well. And, um, then, and you'll probably find things out that even even you as a relative expert didn't know about. I I found out a lot about myself. Yeah. Um, because you know, obviously, um, so the other day was the first time I got out of my my shelter. Um, and it was light uh, because obviously it's 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 dark at mm, six seven o'clock. Yeah, yeah, and I had a had a lion uh, post COVID vaccine actually, um, so I you know needed it. And um, you know there, there's lots I've discovered about myself. You know there's lots I've discovered um, uh, about nature th stuff that I didn't know the sort of deep stuff. Um, so yeah, it's 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 been really pleasant. It's I powerful stuff. We'll yeah. be writing a book and um, we'll see how that goes. Um, Oh, be it be an interesting read. So, so kind of, um, I suppose, final point from me: if people were listening to this podcast or watching, and they wanted to find out a little bit more about all the things that you're up to, or or some of the activities that are on offer from Surviving Minds, uh, where would they where would they find that out? Um, on the web, uh, Google Surviving Minds Foundation, um, and you'll be taken to our web page. There is an inquiry page there. We can't list all the things that we do because sure. it's such a long list; it just becomes overwhelming, and then people want to do them all. Everything takes time in the woods. Um, and it's the easiest thing to do is to ask 
and say, I want to do, can I, is this available? And the, the answer is yes. There will be, um, next year, there will be uh, a more advertised version. Um, but actually, this year, because of, of how it worked, um, sort of with the BCP, it was, it, was, it was advertised for the BCP. You know, we didn't need to add additional um, mm. advertising. Um, it, it, there was some information on there. So it's Surviving Minds Foundation, um, and um, they'll find, they'll be taken to our website. From there. There. Yeah, brilliant. Well, thank you for talking to us today and, and talking us through your journey. And I mean, it, A, it's really interesting, but the, the way that, you know, you've probably contributed to that that rediscovery and that, uh, you know, connection with well-being that's so important is, is, is really admirable. So, and, you know, wish you all the best with the foundation in the future. Thank you. Can I just add, it's... Um, so I, I live in the West Midlands, mm. uh, so I, I'm out of area, although I have lived in, in, in Dorset. And um, I think, you know, the BCP is actually very, very forward thinking in, in initiatives. You know, it, it's great to see, you know, uh, you know, I went to Southbourne the other day. It's a lovely, area. you know, there's a mm -hmm. lot going on within Dorset that should really be heralded, um, you know. So, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. And well, actually, our aspiration is for us to be the well-being capital of the UK. So it chimes in. We, you know, we've got all the beaches. We've got we've got woodland. We've got, you know, all Everything. of these amazing natural spaces. Yeah. Now's the time to, to bring it all together and, and make people yeah. live good lives. So, yeah, yeah all on board. Thank, Thank you very you. much for your time. Cheers, mate. So thanks for joining us for today's episode. If you want to hear a little bit more about some of the other journeys that the businesses have been on as we help them through the pandemic, check out some of the other episodes in this mini series. And also a big urge to all businesses, charities and organisations in the BCP region. Our economic development team at the council are here to support you both through today and tomorrow, including some of the other grant funding that may be available in the future. So make sure you sign up to our BCP business newsletter and hopefully we can help you in the future. Thanks for joining us.